all revenues, whether you spend them at source or they are swept to account revenue fund, should be part of a financial statement. So this was the first financial year that we were reporting revenues that were generated by our health facilities. So then the impression that your revenue grew might not be accurate because you are comparing with a year when you are not uh, reporting uh, accurately. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, I'll agree with you if, because once we consider something that we've not been considering before, therefore it shows that uh, uh, the money reported that particular year might have also been collected the previous year. So I can't with certainty say uh, it grew to that extent or not, but your observation is correct, Mr. Chairman. Now, when we talk about land rates, and in every other county we have had issues around valuation rolls, um, issues around land rates, and I want to ask this question, uh, making an assumption that I know your professional background. Um, you are a quantity surveyor by profession? Correct. Correct. So it means that issues of land rates and valuation rolls are things that are within your professional domain. I have an idea, although specifically conserving doesn't relate to uh, land rates. Uh, there, but there is a, a I relationship. I have an idea about it. What, what, is, what measures have you taken as a county to ensure that you optimize your collection on land rates uh, in Marsabit? Mr. Chairman, this issue of uh, on-source revenue has been a pain in the neck. And uh, recently we've been having consultation, serious consultation. We are in the process of automating the whole system and we are halfway through uh, by the uh, beginning of the next financial year first quarter i hope to ensure that uh, it is fully automated and and that uh, there are no revenue leakages and that people will be sensitized we have a whole workshop we have aligned in fact um, i have asked the department to procure a consultant to take through uh, the whole team so that we will be able to report uh, good collection every financial year. So I'm on this uh, matter and uh, I think next financial year when we shall be meeting, we will have a very good report for you, Mr. Chairman. But the demand notices you have issued are on the basis of the rates of the defunct Marsabit County Council. Yeah. Do you think that uh, that is still a reasonable um, uh, rate for Marsabit County? No, it doesn't limit to only the the matters which were left by the different council, but to the whole uh, county as uh, at large. We we've really emphasized to the county men and women in Marsabit to ensure that they do um, uh, these collections and returns to the county government. I think there are two uh, documents that are required by law that um, you must. Uh, provide evidence that there is work in progress. One is a spatial plan. I don't know whether you've completed your spatial plan for Massabit County. It's work in progress, Mr. Chairman. And also an up-to-date valuation role. Correct. How far has that gone? Uh, spatial plan is work in progress, as I have said. And uh, issues to do with the, the valuation and uh, the rest, uh, we, ha we have a challenge with the staffing levels. It's part of the indent, as I earlier said that we send to the County Public Service Board so that we can have technical people employed in the county, Mr. Chairman. What we probably will direct as a Senate is to give you a period of six months mm -hmm. uh, for you to conclude the issue on the special plan, because the special plan is, is a requirement. I think it's the County Governments Act. It's in one of the acts. It's, uh, the it's in the County Governments Act. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a requirement within the County Governments Act. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that you have a budget and you conclude the process, yeah. and then a proper valuation role to ensure that you optimize your own source revenue. Yeah. I know it cannot be done overnight, but because we didn't put time frames in the County Governments Act, many counties have not done the uh, special plans. So I think we'll be directing as a Senate that you conclude that exercise in the next six months, uh, so that when the auditors are looking at the audit for the financial year 2023-2024, they can report back on the completion of that. 
uh, I I agree with you, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> that we needed time, and uh, you, you are very kind to give us the six months. Can I request if if you kindly make it uh, nine months? This is a very rigorous process. We are already on it, and we know the challenges that are there. I want to plead with you if we can have uh, nine months, kindly. I think we'll stick to six months so that you can report progress. Okay. I know there are some stages. Um, wh why don't we say we report progress in six months? Okay. Report okay. progress. All right. Yeah, yeah, because agreed. if we, as, as your senator has intervened, he has said the count is, is very vast. So, very kind of him. So, so, so that the time might... But, you know, it cannot be... You've been in office now. This is your sixth year. Yes. And uh, there was a governor for five years. Yes. So it has not been done. If you don't put a timeline to it, it will remain loose. So to report progress in six months on uh, the measures that have been taken to fulfill the requirements of the County Governments Act and to have a valuation role. Most of light, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So clerks, please uh, uh, take note of that. Well, I'll not take chair. Okay. Uh, and, and I think also the automation. That should also include automation of your own source uh, revenue collection. Right. So, okay. We proceed to issue number 4.1. Auditor. Thank you, Chair. Paragraph 4 on use of goods and services. 4.1. Doubtful reimbursement of per diem and meal allowances. The statement of receipts and payments reflects an expenditure of one billion three thirty seven million eight seventy two four twenty nine shillings under use of goods and services which as disclosed in note six to the financial statements it includes an amount of one thirty nine million six thirty eight five ten shillings relating to domestic travel and existing and subsistence allowances. The latter balance includes an amount of five seventy four thousand four hundred shillings paid as reimbursement of per diems and meal allowances to officers and participants who attended sensitization meetings in Moyale sub county between 10th and 16th September 2018. However, supporting documents including requisition from the user department, evidence of mobilization of the public through adverts or chief barazas, the procurement records for the car hire services, attendance registers, daily programs of activities, and a payment schedule for the county officers who are not provided for audit review. Further, the expenditure related to 2018-19 financial year, but the amount of 574,400 shillings was not included in the pending bill schedule as at 30th June 2019. In the circumstance, the accuracy and validity of the expenditure of 574,400 shillings could not be confirmed. Thank you. Governor. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> Community sensitization meetings uh, in county government development projects were undertaken in Moyale sub-county uh, for that financial year and supporting documents such as attendance registers, payment schedules, daily programs of activities, approval memos from the relevant department, accounting officer, public engagement notices undertaken through the sub-county administrator's office are attached for your perusal, Mr. Chairman, at Appendix 4.1. Auditor General, have you looked at Appendix 4.1? Uh, yes, Chair, we have looked at, we have the requisition from, uh, we have the requisition to which we, by then it was not a attend and register, and also the daily prog uh, program for the activity. Any observations on the, so you feel that the annexures um, justify the expenditure? Yes, to our, uh, up to, to, to our satisfaction. If you look at the internal memo uh, that is attached there, uh, Governor, uh, but since this is your document, let me bring your attention to it. I think there is there is an internal memo. Uh, from head of directorate community liaison. 
through the Principal Administrative Secretary to the Chief Officer of Finance. Are we, are we on, on it? Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, what's the date there? <coughs> 28 March, that's uh, 28 March 2019. And when was the activity undertaken? Um, what is it? Sixteenth September ten to sixteenth September twenty eighteen. But this is it doesn't have this is, how can it be? Mr Chairman, I realize a mix up. I think uh, there must have been an error on uh, uh, on, on, on the dead thing. What is the problem? Um, the death of the letter seems to be in 2019, referring to an activity in 2019. That must be an error, Mr. Chairman. I just noticed. Auditor General, what do you make of that internal memo? Oh, sorry, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm, I'm told that there's a claim they are requesting for this activity which took place in, in, in the previous year. Was this, uh, uh, was it an impressed? Was it, was it treated as an impressed? Can you explain that, Horace? Thank you, Chair. Uh, if you look at those documents, that, that expenditure, was first requested as an impressed, but was not processed within that financial year. And therefore, the officers have claimed that money first, the activity debt. So they have incurred and claimed after yes. the exercise? Yes. Uh, but there is some authorization that is required for that, isn't it? Yes. And where is it? The, the authorization was done through the, 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 the impressed warrant maybe it was not indicated as part of the claim voucher that can be provided mr chair you know as we said if we don't see it then in our mind it does not exist mm. so when you're preparing your documentation and your records you must make sure that you provide us with what is relevant and what completes the picture mm. Uh, because the amount queried is 574,000, I think we have bigger issues coming up. Uh, if the Auditor General confirms that they've looked at the records, we shall then mark it as resolved. Chair, we looked at the records. Actually, if you look at our query, uh, we, we, we were giving here that... Uh, that the latter balance includes an amount of 574 that was paid as a reimbursement of per diem. It was paid after the event. And again, going to the next paragraph, the expenditure related to 2018 2019, which still agrees with the, the same date you are querying, but now subsequently they provided documentation and uh, we were satisfied with that. Yeah. But uh, the issue of inclusion in pending bills? Yeah, actually, we noted that. Uh, in the pending bills at, the, at 30th June 2019, they had not included the same. So, but okay. you had already raised a flag that they did not provide a schedule of pending bills for that financial year. Isn't it? Yes, in paragraph number 1.1. .1. Yes. Yes. So, um, Okay, fine. I think we have a query on pending bills. We'll mm. deal with all those issues no. uh, concurrently. Mm. Unless there's any other query, we can proceed to 4.2. Thank you, Chair. Paragraph 4.2. <coughs> Unjustifi unjustifiable expenditure on rental or produced assets. The expenditure of 1 billion 337 million 872 429 shillings under use of goods and services also includes an amount of 48,702,681 shillings relating to rental or produced assets which in turn includes an amount of 7,719,500 shillings 
incurred in hiring of motor vehicles. The motor vehicles were hired through contract agreements with the different suppliers. However, procurement documents including quotations, evaluation minutes, original copy of the agreements, the activities or functions for which the transport services were being hired for were not provided for audit review. Under the circumstances, the accuracy, validity of the expenditure of 7,719,500 shillings could not be confirmed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The car hire services uh, were procured through framework method of procurement and copies of the procurement documents such as user requisition forms, framework agreements, evaluation minutes, letters of award, and details of uh, locations where the services of the vehicles hired were utilized are uh, all attached for your reference, reference at Appendix 4.2, Mr. Chairman. Um, auditor, have you looked at Appendix 4.2? Yes, Chair. What is your opinion? Chair, yeah, we found the response satisfactory. So support documentations were subsequently provided, though late. Governor, the first few issues that have deferred, mm. the ones to do with financial statements, Yes. the problem is that documentation was provided late. Yes. This issue, documentation was provided late. The previous one, documentation was provided late. Yeah. Let us understand, to what extent are you involved when the auditors come to the county? From the entry to the exit. Mr. Chairman, uh, me as a person or... Uh, yes, you as a chief executive officer of Marsabit. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, the team briefs me when the auditors uh, visit. Uh, that the such visit, uh, auditors come, they make a courtesy call, uh, they tell me they are coming for this exercise, this exercise. Uh, then I, I, I introduce to them the head of the department, the CEC, and he takes the, uh, the exercise over. I don't interfere with the rest of the uh, progress of the exercise, Mr. Chairman. So you don't see them again after that? When they exit, uh, they, they tell me they have conducted this and they are doing this, they have asked for this and that, they brief me. Uh, but on the last one, I was not in the county. I didn't have uh, an opportunity to interact with them. Do you have an audit committee? I have. Mr. That Chair. is running and functional? Yes. Um, Auditor General, what has been the cooperation of Marsabit in terms of involvement in the audit exercise? It has come up again. To what extent has Marsabit County cooperated in the steps of audit whenever you go to the site. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Um, as the Governor has said, the two give us the relevant people to work with because normally, okay, I've never, okay, because of issue two, he has never appeared in an entry meeting, but they are representative like the CCs the CEO, uh, chief officers, they normally come for the entry meeting and we spelled out the time we are there and the activities we will be doing and even we normally give them in advance what we require. Maybe the only challenge which is uh, I've seen is the, the late submission of documents because now that like this is what we are going through, we have uh, checked the submission they are giving us okay we can say they are to the satisfactory but if this thing was provided then because you normally have two chance okay three during the exercise we keep what we call audit queries for them to respond and give us what we had requested after the exercise we normally give a management letter which they are supposed to respond and give us what uh, uh, the exceptional and the line the, uh, the final uh, chances to respond to what we call the draft report to give us also if there are issues which was not responded at the management level they are supposed to respond at the ML level so once they we, we clear the issue of the draft we escalate everything and it becomes a certificate thank you Senator Nyonke uh, Your Excellency mine is an observation um, We've been having various county governments coming and we have been dealing with this issue about late submission of documentation. 
would it be possible because one of the responsibilities of this committee is really not to be accusatory is is a matter of trying to solve the problems because some of the counties that have agreed to work with the auditor general's office re trans release the documents on time make sure that all that is needed even from the management meeting some of the governors are actually sitting through those meetings and what we've discovered is that the county um, governments which sit with the auditor general and follow the protocols on how this documentation need to be handed over and everything is done usually we don't waste a lot of time when they come here because all the issues have already been sorted out in advance and we are able to move faster and quickly is it possible then on your case that you will be able as we move forward to avail the documentation to this team and even if need be assign a particular individual who will be coordinating or liaising on your behalf so that when documents are needed when a management meeting is coming you are able to immediately solve the problem so that we don't come and begin to deal with what they are explaining. Yeah, indeed. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Sir Chairman. Uh, the issue raised by Senator Nyonka very important. I am actually disappointed that I have uh, discovered numerous documentation which the Auditor General is saying were not provided initially but were uh, brought to him later on. Uh, going forward, as you suggested, I uh, will sit down with my team, reorganize ourselves, and ensure that uh, we will make it easy for ourselves and for this committee to ensure that things are done professionally uh, and, and in good time. Um, so let me do an undertaking today that uh, this matter will be resolved once and for all. I think the undertaking uh, that we need is um, you will be involved at least at entry and exit yeah. Yeah. as a chief executive officer uh, that becomes your responsibility yeah. because how do you come to the senate to answer to a report that was generated in your absence mm. it, you might appear to be very clueless or you might realize that there are things that were happening that had not come to your attention mm. so it is important that perhaps as a senate we must also communicate that ceos and governors must be part of entry and exit meetings of the Auditor General. Because many of the things we are dealing with here are things that should not have come to the Senate. Right. If the documents were available. Mm. Yeah. But if they were not available then, and they are available now, then you have cooked them. Yeah. And no. if they've been cooked, uh, that's why ESCC is present. Uh, Eva, please go on record. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm CPA Iba Washuka, ESCC liaison officer. Sorry, I was in the other meeting. That's why I did a bit. Yeah, so we, we have ESCC present so that we can now start asking ourselves if these records were not present in 2020 for? during audit, and the Auditor General was there for probably two weeks or three weeks, did an entry meeting, did the audit, did an exit meeting, did a management letter, and were not provided. Now, today, you come to the Senate with, uh, I think these are four reams, four reams of paper. Uh, have, have your officers cooked them subsequently? That's why I think we, you must be involved at least at entry and exit. Now, Meshach, where else do you expect the governor should be involved? Chair, I think the weakness of Mars a bit is uh, they don't respond to most of the draft reports. If they could be responding to the draft reports, then I think the issues should be would be scaled down in the final audit certificate. I think that is a weakness they have, and that was there even in the last audit certificate. But where do you want the governor to be involved? The governor should be involved, should be present personally at the exit meeting, and should ensure that the draft audit report is responded to not delegated. What about the entry? If, if, you know, it, the, the entry meeting, the, the exit meeting, and also ensure that uh, he personally goes through the draft audit report because that is what details what will eventually be in the audit certificate. If that was to happen, half the issues here would yes. not have come to the Senate. Yes. And we have, would have saved everybody's time. Mm. So I think you need to uh, perhaps give that undertaking 
that in subsequent audits you shall be more hands-on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I earlier said, I want to assure you that uh, uh, I will be available for the team uh, once they properly not notify me and even uh, during the exit uh, of the exercise. Uh, but I want to also uh, assure you that no document here um, has been cooked because, you know, last five years, Mr. Chairman, I don't know whether it was the same with other counties. Most of the time we spent uh, visiting um, offices in Isiolo and in Nairobi, uh, answering questions every other week. You know, so our files were being carried left, right, center. Sometimes uh, some of them are not have not been returned even now. Uh, so uh, after we got these questions, what the team has been telling me, they took a lot of trouble trying to trace some of the files. This is part of the problem that we had. However, however, the bit about being professional on the part of the staff and ensuring that things are provided in a timely manner uh, is very important. I agree with you. I want to do an under undertaking today that uh, going forward, we will be able to be hands-on and ensure that things are done at the correct time. Okay, thank you. You will see that matter recurring. Uh, it was important we deal with it now, but you yeah. see it recurring in, That's right. uh, in subsequent issues. Yeah. Fine. So on uh, rental of produced assets, uh, Auditor General, you're saying you have perused the annexures and in your view, this uh, has been cleared. On training expenses, 4.3. Please read it. Okay. Paragraph 4.3 on unsupported training expenses included in the expenditure of one billion three thirty seven million eight seventy two four twenty nine shillings under use of goods and services an amount of one thirty nine million zero zero one five eighty seven shillings relating to training expenses which further includes an amount of one million two thirty nine four hundred shillings paid to members of the public for youth training program conducted in Karare and uh, Mubisa wards. However, supporting documents including attendance list, back to office reports and authority used to pay allowances to members of the public were not provided for audit review. Consequently, the accuracy and validity of the expenditure of 1,239,400 shillings could not be confirmed. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Supporting documents for the youth training program in Bulgabo, uh, in Bobisa Ward, and Kituruni in Karare wards, such as attendance lists, payment schedules, back to office reports, and approved memo from the Education Department accounting officer showing a breakdown of the rates for the participating youths are attached for your reference at Appendix 4.3, Mr. Chairman. Auditor General, again, you've got a long a thick uh, pile of uh, records. Have you looked at them? Uh, yes, Chair. We have looked at them. And uh, whatever we were uh, asking has been provided and we verified. So, so Governor, what was this? The, the auditor is saying paid to members of public. That these were payments to members of public. Yeah. So, under what circumstances do you pay 1.2 million to members of the public? Uh, because if it was conference delegates, that's different. If it was meeting attendance, that's different. But the auditor is saying to members of public. Mr. Chairman, this was training for our youth in, in the county. What was the process of identification of the youth who were trained? Mr. Chairman, we have a... Uh...